this is a lower cuspid, but there really isn't proper space for a lower cuspid. This patient had the cuspid out here. It was buccal because of the inadequate arch length. And uh, she did not want to have orthodontics. She just wanted to have her, her tooth back. So in this particular case, we took this tooth out and we had a wax up done. And so this is an impression of the wax up as a model and we scanned it in. So I wanted to do this because of the overlap. This was not, uh, I was concerned about the position of the implant relative to this position of this tooth. So we're using a wax up here to position the implant. So that model was labeled wax up. But the point of this is that it's just a single tooth, but because of the position of the tooth and was could have been different than the usual, um, I requested a wax up. So it's this is a, a an imp alginate impression of the wax up. We poured a stone model and we brought it into the software to show future tooth position. And when we plan the case this way, this case is going to be done with a flap. I haven't done it yet, uh, but this case. Oh, okay. Yeah, I probably flap 75% of my cases. And if you go to the website, we put up a little list of reasons why one could fla one might flap the case. Um, but the way we plan the case is by making the model translucent and then placing the implant with its abutment right down the center of the tooth. We also had marker that we can see, so we can see what that relationship is. And then when we go back to the bone, we superimpose the wax up on the cross section on the, of the patient's bone. So here you can see, this is a cross section through the wax up. And you can see the bone is relatively thin. But also, there's every reason that this case should come out just beautifully. Because I know where the future tooth is. And that's the key. If I didn't do the wax up, I think the implant would have been in a, a, a little different position. And, uh, you know, it may have been too lingual, too buccal. You know, you still have a, you know, you still can swing this around a little bit, even though the bone. It's a, you know, it's a three and a half millimeter diameter tapered implant. And so there is room to swing it a little bit, buccal lingual. But if I see the wax up tooth, that gives me the opportunity to put it right on the money. So it was, it's really what I'm interested in illustrating here is the paradigm that, um, you know, although we say that a lot of our methodology of, allows one to plan these cases without wax ups, in some cases, it's prudent to do a wax up, and this is a case like that. And the way it was planned was by initially placing the implant through the wax up tooth, so you can see exactly how it will be in the future tooth, and then working backwards to the bone and seeing how close you could come to that optimal position.